And then we're gonna get our capo, our handy capo, put that on that six spread. So we're back, okay? Today on Chelly's Mental Wealth, this is real life. This is real life. <laughs> we're gonna be discussing individual therapy. Yes, individual therapy. People wanna know about individual therapy. I've experienced individual therapy throughout my whole life. I've been doing individual therapy off and on. Um, so just come with me to the end of the video so I can give you some tips as to why it could be beneficial for you to go to individual therapy. And I will also be discussing my experience as to how it helped me. And hopefully it'll motivate you guys and inspire you to see that, hey, nobody's perfect. And maybe, maybe it could help, maybe, okay? let's get this started okay Bye. so yes today I'm doing something a little bit more candid you know a little different um, this is my son's <laughs> artwork and you know I got my makeup my mess you know I don't have time to do laundry I'm trying to multitask boom 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 but let's get started you guys so individual therapy <sighs> individual therapy for some people it's really really hard to even consider individual therapy because I mean I feel like when I talk about individual therapy, it's such an easy topic for me because I just talk and talk and talk and talk and talk and talk. I'm sure you guys already know that by now. <laughs> and I just spill the beans. I mean, that's one thing about me. I just spill the beans all the time. And I know that for some people, it's not easy to spill the beans. It's not easy to really talk about, hey, I suck at this or I need help with this or just in general, like asking for help is really, really difficult. So I completely understand that as to why it's kind of scary to even think about how the hell am I gonna talk to a stranger if I can't even talk to my family member about what happened to me or, or what's making me feel whatever I'm feeling, you know? Whenever you do decide to seek ther uh, therapies, um, therapy, you can always do it through your insurance. Um, it usually it depends on the copay. If you have HMO or PPO, you can also do it the private route. Some people will do pro bono. Some people will do a sliding scale. And a sliding scale pretty much means that they go off of what you make in an income. And sometimes they actually, like considering your situation, if you're an immigrant, if you really talk to them about your situation, if you're going through a lot of stuff, Depending on the therapist, they'll be very, very empathetic and they'll try to do payment plans. So it really just depends. That's why I really, really hope that eventually throughout the years, a lot more people are into the field and more Mexicans get in the field because the more there are more of us, the more um, it will be accessible and the more clients that they'll have and it's just gonna be more accessible, you guys. One thing I will say is look at it in a way where this person is someone that you only see once or a couple of times out of the month where you know you can say certain things and it's not gonna come around or the other person's not gonna tell the other person or they're gonna judge you or it's like, cause that's their profession. Their profession is to kind of guide you to figure out how can you problem solve? What is the cause of your depression and anxiety? So maybe if you just change your perspective as, as to how you look at therapy, it will help you with building the confidence of not being scared, okay? Another thing too is whenever you decide to go seek for a therapist, please make sure, make sure you do not um, ask the doctor for any help. It's, it's kind of, I've always used the analogy and I've heard this um, used in many different videos and just even in the field where they say, if you go to the doctors and, the, and you tell the doctors, you know, I'm feeling depressed or I have a lot of anxiety, the doctor's gonna just write you medication. So if that's the case, please tell your doctor, I'd rather be referred to a psychologist or a therapist or counseling to see if medication is needed because it's kind of like jumping the gun. Like a doctor's not gonna know if medication is something that you need. You know, it's like if you were to go to, to a beauty salon and you say, can I get my nails done? <laughs> like it's just, it ain't gonna work. You don't do that. You have to go to a therapist to really, really decide and and go through the whole treatment plan to see if medication is what you need, you know, for your type of situation, whatever you're going through, whatever your um, mental symptoms are. Yes, make sure that you always go seek a therapist first. Tell the doctor, refer me to a therapist and go from there. Don't ever take medication first. Please exhaust as many treatments or as many interventions and coping skills and resources before you even jump into medication. That's just my personal opinion, but you could do what you do, okay? Uh, so the other thing is, is whenever you do decide to go to therapy, and let's say you had a really horrible ass experience, right? This person is just not what you thought it was gonna be. And you didn't like it, they didn't do a good job, so I always will say look for another therapist because everybody's different. You, everyone's different. Everyone will, will do different treatment um, 
um, skills, just every every therapist is different. I work in the field and I work with vast of different types of therapy therapists and they do different types of work. So switch it up, you guys. It's like it's like, like a doctor. If you have a doctor and you don't like your pediatrician, if you don't like your um, primary doctor, you switch it up, right? The third therapist should be the same way even as a even a psychiatrist too if you don't feel like the psychiatrist is doing the right job within your child or your teen or your um, or the elderly or someone that you take care of that's um, intellectually disabled if you don't feel like they're being ethically correct switch it up do not feel obligated to stick with them okay and then lastly I think I would say about individual therapy is I guess why individual therapy is really, really beneficial is it kind of gives you that outlet where you can actually talk about what you want to talk about without feeling judged. So it's just a safe space. And some of us don't have that safe space where we're comfortable um, opening up and letting that wall down. It's really hard for us to do that. Um, I know that it's easier for me. I know that for me, being a lot very, very open can also be... Uh, something that can bite me in the ass because it has in the past but i will would never change that about me because i wear my heart on my sleeve and i feel like being honest helps other people realize like oh wow like you know like she's going through the same shit i am and like look at she pulled through so that's the purpose of my channel too is like i'm gonna integrate my own personal life my own personal struggles so that you guys can see that i will implement the same stuff and as we grow together you can see that it is possible it is possible now i went to individual therapy when i was 15 for the first time the reason why i was feeling depressed or how i found out was i was i was 15 my one of my good friends prompted me to go seek a therapist because i kept saying why do i feel sad why do i feel like i want to die like why like i don't get it like why you know i know my family loves me um there's no abuse like i don't understand so he told me to go talk to a therapist and to go ask my mom so i did i went in and asked my mom hey mom i'm feeling this way and and i know it's kind of hard for i mean even a child like i can't even imagine because when i work with some of my consumers it's so difficult sometimes for them to even speak up about certain things that they're allowed to ask about so i can see how hard that could be for anyone at that age so if you're 15 or 14 hopefully this will motivate you and make you um have the confidence to ask your mom and not feel judged or your dad or your family member anyone that you want um to seek help so that you go see a therapist and not feel judged so yes i went and i asked my mom and my mom of course she was just like oh you know what do you mean you want to go seek the loquera and she called it the loquera you know and, and it's still being said to this day and she, i was fortunate enough that despite my mom saying those comments i still went and I decided to not take medication because I did have a family member that did take medication for anxiety and she gave me some advice as to why I shouldn't. So I just, you know, I followed her advice and I made sure. So as soon as I went into a therapy, I told them I do not want to take medication. It was offered to me a couple of times, but I declined, 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 and I'll still decline. Um, so when I went to therapy is when I ended up figuring out that someone within my circle a really really good friend of mine was really affecting my self-esteem it was a lot of negative comments a lot of putting down that i didn't really realize i just kind of got used to it you know i thought it was normal and i mean ultimately my friend was really going through a lot of stuff at home which resulted for her to 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 respond that way towards me and at the time we both didn't even really know what was going on she didn't know how to tell me what was going on in the home setting and i didn't know how to tell her how much it was affecting me so what i ended up doing is i cut her out of my life and i really really regretted doing that because i think that it's really important for you to have that closure i think it's really important for you to always talk to that person and say hey you know this is and this happened and this is why we can't be friends or this is why we can't um, be together anymore or this is why i know you're my family member but for some reason we just don't get along and i just want to keep it cordial it's okay to have that conversation but i know it's really hard because for some people it, it, it feels like it's 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 conflict and people are scared of conflict and i understand that so it's kind of just changing that in a way of not looking at it in a conflict kind of sense it's like i'm gonna problem solve and i need to say this and if they understand or not it doesn't matter as long as i said it and i moved on it is what it is so if you kind of look at it in that sense it kind of helps you but everybody's different you know like and i'm hoping that with my experience you guys and kind of get motivated and maybe want to seek a therapist because I feel like it's worth wonders for me. Whenever I don't talk, I feel like crap.
Like, that's just me. That's my coping skill, but I figured that out. Maybe you don't need to go seek a therapist. Maybe you just need a friend. Maybe you just need to find that person that you trust, that you can run and say certain things where you know you just want someone to listen to so you could kind of filter everything out and just have clarity i will say this though when you go seek a therapist there's no biases you know it really really helps a lot with removing the biases when you talk to a friend or a family member they already kind of know your history so there's these bias things and a therapist is kind of looking at it in a more professional aspect and i'm gonna give you an example for me the reason why i'm going to therapy is because i have really low self-esteem you guys really 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 low self-esteem really i mean just talking about it makes me want to cry but yeah i have really low self-esteem and everything triggers me i mean fucking everything and it's very difficult and look at right now like um just thinking about it triggers me so the fact that i'm going to go get help is huge for me because i was even scared to go back so i was like shit like i don't want to face it but i know i have to because i'm tired of feeling this way and i know that feeling like shit is gonna affect other people around me because it already is with my son you have to sometimes really reflect and take responsibility that okay you feel like shit and it's okay to ask for help it's okay to try to better yourself so that you know you could be the best you and a better happier you find what's gonna make you happier but the most important thing is is realizing that sometimes you can't do it by yourself and that's okay and sometimes we're not perfect and that's okay you guys it's okay to not feel perfect because <laughs> we're human beings and we make mistakes you know like mean, going back to therapy my therapist did tell me that I need to stop doing my substance abuse that I usually do every other day and that's where I'm at. It's been a very difficult road, you guys. I've been documenting it. Um, it's been up and down and it's really hard, huh? but I'm not going to give up because I know I can do it. If I can fuck it, if I can, if it takes me three times for me to pass my, um, my cosmetology license, it might take me five, six times for me to conquer my um, habit but I know I can, and I know you guys can, okay? I'll talk to you guys later, and have a nice day. Bye. I think all of us should have a hobby of some kind. They like to play, get them a good instrument, and play. You don't have to try to make a living out of it, just play.